Okay, everyone, I think we're live. Are we live? I think we're live. <laughs> How's everybody today? So um, let me try to put this in a comfortable spot on the screen. And um, you've probably seen the the little um, a promo photo that we that we have going on. I was holding uh, this pen. That's because I intend to draw in pen today. I think uh, I think we're going to do it in pen. All right, let's see. Um, let me mute my computers. Okay, perfect. Okay, hi everyone. So Rick, you're here. Very good. I just, you know, I look up and I see that Rick is here. So that's great. Uh, a lot of you again from all over. My goodness. And yes, it is really damp here. So not just in New York City. Montreal, Arizona, Florida. Oh gosh, I hope you guys are doing okay. Um, and that you're staying home as much as possible. Astina, you're from Denmark. I, I wish I could be through everybody. Jenny, happy you are here. Ute. So many people I would like to greet personally. And I know that I'm starting to recognize names and seeing people that I really enjoy uh, hearing the feedback from. And I usually love your questions. So thank you for all being here today. So, you know, our news... Um, you've noticed is uh, Myla, um, or maybe it's the name of uh, her mom, I'm not sure, but the person posting on Sketchy is uh, Myla, um, and it could be that it is this uh, charming young lady here, and we are going to do this in pen. Um, what it means is it's going to be a challenge, because obviously we have a lot of different tones and a lot of, uh, you know, gradients in this particular photo to work from. So I'm making a decision right away, guys, is not to make a big drawing, maybe not as big as I usually would, and, um, and then hopefully we'll get it done within an hour. So I'm going to open my little iPad, which is usually the iPad on which I keep my reference photo. Um, the reason why I prefer the iPad to the iPhone is because the screen is just a little bit bigger and uh, that allows for, uh, you know, just more detail. So, guys, I was on the phone before I started this live for about an hour and a half, 90 minutes or just about. And while I was on the phone, I was like, oh, let me do a little warm up of this of this muse, right? Um, just to see if I'm able to do it. So what I did is I actually drew, um, well, I guess my take on my lab, which may not be exactly, uh, you know, very, very much like her, but that was kind of a start, and it was kind of to rub my brains around it. It's very small. I've got the little scribblies on the side here. And I'm going to show you in a moment uh, what uh, paper I'm using, but that that's a start. It's really small, though. Look at the, you know, the size of, of my hands compared to this. But this was made in blue big pen. And I think that's what we're going to do today. I think we're going to go in blue. What do you think? I hope you guys are okay with blue. I'm going to show you the paper I'm using today. It is one that I've used in the past. So let me move this over here, right? It's Blick. You know this brand. And it's uh, Bristol. Uh, but venom means that there is a little bit of a tooth to it. It's not entirely um, smooth. I'm, and now I'm about to sneeze. I apologize. <coughs> so, um, sorry about that. <laughs> so as I'm using uh, something with a little bit of tooth, it means that um, it's got a tiny little bit of grab on the, the big pen, you know, the ballpoint, so it's always better than just a very smooth, smooth, entirely smooth surface. And the one I have right now is Blick, um, though I do usually have a preference for Canson paper, but the Canson paper that I have is entirely smooth. Okay, so why don't we get um, started? I'm <laughs> again recognizing a bunch of people. This is great. All right, sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, so again, this was my first attempt, and it's very small. Uh, it's already pretty much dried, because you know that even though we work in ink like this, sometimes it gets smeared. Thank you for the bless yous. Thank you. Thank you, guys. 
Thank you for being uh, so sweet. Okay, let me see if there is a way for me to see you better. No, I can't see your comments. Okay, how do I do this? How do I move the top chat? I can't. Hmm. Right. I don't know. It looks different on on the uh, on the screen there on the YouTube screen. All right, so. Um, I'm using the same paper that I was using one day when we did this. Do you remember doing this back in, I want to say, maybe April? Um, and uh, to answer, ooh, to answer Nikira's question, can I use Procreate? Of course you can use Procreate. And uh, Nikira, if you do, I suggest that you use the ink bleed. Um, yeah, the ink bleed uh, brush. Hey, Nora, can I ask you a favor? Could you bring me my little lingette that's on the table here, please? All right, I'm putting my, my kit to work. You know the lingette? Thank you, sweet. Thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm having a, a sticky, ah, sticky issue right there. Okay. Um, oh, right, Annie, you are in Italy. That's great. I don't know how you made it to Europe because I know I'm not allowed to travel to Europe these days because of the current situation in the world. Okay, so let's start. And um, again, you know me by now. I am not one to really get too caught up on resemblance. If I if I achieve some type of some type of resemblance resemblance, I'm happy. But if I don't. You know, we're just going to go with what we have here. All right, let me see if I'm in the right spot. Okay. And, um, okay, these are actually not helpful to me when I draw too close. What I started doing when I started this drawing earlier, when I did the small version, is I started doing uh, the, the shape of the face very roughly. Oh my gosh, this is not much bigger than what I was doing earlier, but okay. All right. Something like this. I'm starting very lightly. Did you notice? This is super light, but I want to get, um, you know me, I want to get proportions somewhat right. There's going to be a little eyebrow here. And there's going to be a little eyebrow there. Now, remember when drawing a child, I mean, remember, as if I had talked about it for ages before. But when we draw a child... Um, oh, no, by the way, Beatrice, uh, my daughter is not drawing with me right now. Nora, you're not drawing this with me, are you? But you're drawing someone? Oh, but Nora is drawing. So she's drawing, but just not, uh, you know, just not with us. And I believe the reference link should be underneath the, the video. Yeah, the reference photo should be underneath this video. Anyway, I just wanted to 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 pause for just one second to point out something interesting about when you draw a kid. Uh, their facial features haven't been exactly set the way they, they are going to be when they're adult. So, um, for instance, one thing that is true is that usually there is more of a space between eyes uh, in, a, in, in a child's face. Um, also... There is more concentration on features for a bigger head than later in life when our features sort of like, you know, grow into our head. So it's really, it's really neat to keep that in the back of your mind when you draw a child. Okay. And as I draw this child, I'm trying to keep my proportions, you know, somewhat decent. We'll see how that goes, okay? <laughs> I'm going to try. And remember that when I draw with pen, um, I'm not one to build a pre-sketch pre in, in pencil before because it's just, um, you know, like going without a parachute, <clears throat> without a safety net, guys. Just... <laughs> okay. Uh, Patrick, hi. You know that Patrick is uh, teaching... Um, 30 faces, 30 days, uh, with a bunch of us, uh, this month. 
this is this has been a lot of fun absolutely love patrick's work patrick in bruges what's the weather like in bruges patrick tell us because it's pretty nasty here on the east coast okay Also, the reason why we start lightly is because these lines are what they are now. But you know, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have little hairs, you know, on the hairline and all that good stuff that is going to be uh, very much there, very much, you know, making the line less defined. So I'm trying to place the eyes where where it is that I think I see them, sort of, kind of. Maybe here, yeah. Okay. Sunny, it's sunny in Bruges. Yay. That's good. Um, same thing. When you draw a child's face and there are some eyelashes, don't overdo them because then it looks as though the child is wearing makeup. And, uh, you know, it's not a pageant-style, you know, creepy stuff. Let's keep it uh, natural, you know, even if it's pretty on the photo. We don't want to overdo um, features that are more adult. Keep this subject childlike as much as we can. I don't know if I'm um, if I'm right about the placement of the irises, but I'm I'm gonna say, ish. Um, that's because I don't want to get too technical. Uh, and start building lines and stuff. No, I don't want to do that. Okay. All right. So let's see that little nose. Be somewhere here. Um, you know, already I'm kind of re, <laughs> like, reassessing where I've put things. It's interesting. I don't know. Okay, this could work. It's always good to approach a nose, like it's uh, a ball in the middle, and a little one here, and a little one there. Mm -hmm. Ute, are you drawing in pen as well? Are you maybe in fountain pen? I wonder about that. I want to know. All right, there's going to be a lot of build up of uh, you know of values on this face so don't worry about uh, about keeping things very you know plain right now but you see I'm revisiting the the shape of the face now I'm, I'm going uh, going with a little more certainty on my on my pen yeah There's not exactly a smile on this on this photo, so I, I wanna I wanna stay true to that, okay? Right now it looks as though almost I've I've made her smile, but you'll see that what I'm going to add will make that a little more realistic. Okay, let's see if this is right. It's funny, I didn't do it this way when I when I did it while I was on the phone before this. I didn't tackle it the same way. <clears throat> I'm tackling it like this right now. 
All right, so all around her face, um, we're gonna have a lot of hair and uh, we're gonna start patching and then we'll add the curls. <laughs> okay, Uta Fountain. Stina, you crack me up. Thank you for being here from Europe, guys. Denmark and Germany, I believe. All right, so I don't want to waste any time. And as I was doing on the phone earlier, I was just, you know, making this area along her cheek just very, very dark. Because it is, if you look at the reference photo, it is. <laughs> And that's usually where your ballpoint pen is going to drool a little bit, okay? Yeah. So bear with me. Keep in mind that the first one, the one I did a few minutes ago when I was warming up for this, uh, ended up being this. We're doing this a little bigger now. And also, uh, if you have questions, just really wave really, you know, actively so I can see you. Ha ha ha. Where the hair is very dark, I feel very safe just uh, making these lines, whatever they are, you know, like this, this cross hatching going in all kinds of directions right now. Um, because that's that's the basis of what I'm going to do with the hair. But on top of that, we're going to add uh, the curls and the texture, the volume. Um, but it's very it's very easy to do when you have that first layer of you know cross hatching underneath like this. You see, this is just to to cover ground because there's a lot of hair to deal with on this photo. I would say that's most of the strength of this picture, right? It's just the beauty of that all that hair that I'd like to convey today. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how. So you see I'm just going you know the hair just sort of radiates kind of like ray of rays of sun. Bear with me on this. This does not at all look like the the photo okay but you see when I do this I'm just covering ground and I'm, I'm gonna make the hair much more possible to appear okay so let's see if the eye is here Hair goes up to here. And now I'm kind of making the outline of the hair. Stay light on your pen when you do this because those curls are very thin at the end. And as they approach towards the, fa the face, um, things are going to be much thicker and darker, but keep them very thin at the edges. Okay. So, hair is really not that complicated. It's a lot of squiggles, whether you're drawing someone with very curly hair or not so curly hair, whether you're drawing a beard. Um, you're gonna go in squiggles over this cross hatching and you'll see it really works. I've done it before, I promise. It does work. As long as you stay light on your pen and you don't have any expectations whatsoever to finish this in five or 10 minutes. Because that is exactly what you don't want, is to try to speed through this. It's not going to work. So wherever it's dark, you can add a little bit of 
hatching inside but over it because ink is funny that way over it you want to show that texture see and this is this is how I'm gonna build hair all over I may be able to go all the way around I am not sure but that's that's my uh, that's my approach so thin thin lines here and then squiggle on top to bring in that texture and that depth and then we will even do the edges even better there it's uh, such a soothing exercise to draw here to me it is And so on and so forth okay so right now I'm just setting the the foundation for for the hair there's much more to go much further to go I hope, despite the fact that my hand is all over the place, I hope that you can still see what I'm drawing. Okay, let's move to the eastern side of the face here. And then we're going to start working into the features uh, of the face itself. Because in my opinion, that's what's the most interesting. Nostril here, and there are two, and then there is a shadow right underneath this. Let's put and a shadow here. Okay, you see that's what I'm trying to convey here. It's pretty stark shadow right along that nostril there mm -hmm. it looks so stark right now it doesn't look right um, yeah oh <laughs> yeah I've, you know hair is, is tricky hair is tricky but uh, the curlier the hair the happier I am personally when I when I have a muse like this um, I just find it so much fun to draw curly hair. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to do this obviously in some type of cross hatching. Let me try to get the, the lips right. Somewhere here. Lips are interesting. The top lip is usually the one that is in the dark, so it's going to be darker than the lower lip. Okay, right now it really doesn't look like much. But at least I, I want to sort of determine where the, the bottom lip ends. I'm going to put it right here, okay? Oh, Rick. Okay, bye, Rick. Thank you for being here, Rick. Love the fact that you stopped by. And now I'm going to start adding some very, very light uh, cross-hatching uh, in the 
bottom part of the face, which is the one that is not as lit, let's say, as the forehead, okay? On the forehead here, we're going to have a whole area of light, just like on the nose here, too. So again, right now, my... Um, my hatches can be very, very straight, very plain, because it's like a, a layer sort of thing. Okay, so um, it's funny, I'm doing the back, uh, the bottom of the face before I, I take care of the top. It's just how it is today. Not always my approach, but today it is. Um, underneath the lip, there's always a little bit of a shadow there. You see it on the photo too. Don't forget to convey that. And we're going to come back and come back and layer and layer and layer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my phone drawing, uh, D-Wade, was about 90 minutes, 80 minutes to be precise, because I didn't draw the entire length of the conversation. But yeah. Yeah, I just, I just did a lot of uh, little hatches in this one. Okay, so there's also a neck that is going to appear right about here. Okay, and now we've got the edge of her face. And this is an important step because in the original photo, it's, there's a little bit of lighting from underneath here that shows, and I don't want to lose out on that. It's beautiful. Okay, more hair, and then we're going to have the neck of ending here, I think. Okay. And underneath the jaw, in the neck, things are uh, definitely darker. So that's why here is with the hair is probably the darkest values that you're gonna you're gonna have to convey on paper. Uh, pardon my twisting around of the paper here, but it's more than necessary. No, are you still drawing? Okay. Uh, the neck here is a great exercise in, you know, uh, gradation of uh, values, I guess it's called, in, in the right terms. 
we're going from a very deep dark blue to a much lighter lighter blue at the edge of, of her neck here right here make that super duper light and the neck, you know, is it's round, so you have to convey that. It's not a flat surface. There we go. Okay, so right now it looks extremely dark underneath. That's perfectly normal. Okay, and here comes some hair. And to be exact, okay, let me try to put the hair exactly where it is. It's going to be here, there. And so on and so forth. So the hair really goes far east keep it light at the edges okay meaning make those curls reasonably you know light and now with my hatching yet again i can just bring in that layer of dark making it much easier to do curls over it. Let's move it this way. How about that? Can you see? Much easier to pull lines towards me every time I cross hatch. You know. Now, when you try to um, achieve something dark with a ballpoint pen, uh, you are going to find out that the ballpoint pen uh, wants to drool. So if it drools in the dark area like that, it's all good. Let it, you know, that's what mine is doing right now. Fine. He's doing it like it's its job. Okay, let's do this cheek here. Whenever I'm on skin, my uh, cross hatching is extremely light, tentative, and when I'm in the hair, I can just really go to town and, uh, you know, really put pressure on the ballpoint and not worry about a thing, because in fact the the drooling of the pen kind of helps the texture of the hair, so it's kind of neat that it happens that way. See, like here, here, it's drooling, it's fine. And now for the texture of the hair, you come in and add it. That's why it can be such a, you know, such a time-consuming task. Why? Works. So you see a layer of cross-hatching and then squiggles on top. Even if you barely see them, it doesn't matter. It's worth doing them, you know. That is what is going to create that uh, that volume that you cannot get if you just make straight lines. All right, let me see. Am I, am I 
right here. I think this eye could go a little further here. And cross hatching here. Again, super lightly on the skin. Here I have a lot of residual lines from my original sketch. I don't mind, it doesn't bother me. I'll work with that. Sorry, it's probably off camera if I do this. Okay, much better. Because we are dealing with uh, a round, very round uh, forehead, uh, we want to convey that, you know. Those of you who took uh, cross hatching with me, you know that one of the things that I start with is drawing a vegetable or a fruit, uh, in that case a, a potato, because the potato is kind of like the shape of a face. It's got bumps, it's got rounds, yeah. Oh, thank you, Jonathan, for being here. And uh, Godspeed, okay? Wow. Florida right now, oof. So look, the, the hairline here is not uh, straight. It's got little hair that comes in a tiny little bit. It's going to make this uh, hairline look very natural to convey that. You see what I'm doing here? Just a bit. It's getting there. I know that there is absolutely nothing realistic about these straight lines that I'm doing, but they're just here to help me build, you know, the, the texture of the hair. So that when I come back on top and make curls, the curls are less, you know, laborious to do. Once you have a little bit of background, you see? <laughs> And I'm probably going to leave quite a bit of hair unfinished today. I don't think I'm, I'm going to be able to make it otherwise. But I want to show you what we're, you know, what we're able to do just with a, a ballpoint pen. There are darker areas than others in that hair, I noticed. Okay. 
I have not even gotten into the the face itself, you know, like making those patches work. The work I'm doing right now is extremely um, light, you know. I'm barely touching the surface of my paper with my ballpoint pen. Okay, so right now I'm, I'm slowly building around this spot of light on her forehead. I'm just building and building and building. I don't know if I told anyone, um, maybe I hinted at it last week, but I got a, I got a new cat this week, a new kitty. She is 11 months old. We adopted her and uh, she is a scared. She is still very much in hiding, even though it's been now six days. comes out at night, that's for sure. Oh boy. It's going to take a long time for that kitty to warm up to us. We're trying not to get too discouraged. It is meditative, right, what we're doing? Totally. That's, what, that's why my mind goes to kitties. <laughs> Seriously, though. See, I'm going extremely lightly on that pen. Extremely lightly. Okay. This looks almost like a, a caricature, okay. Um, I don't know, Teresa, if my daughter will share her drawing later. I'm not sure. We're going to have to ask her. No, are you still drawing? No? No. Oops. So maybe there won't be a drawing. <laughs> yeah, Uta, I know. I think the new cat got a new family. And yes, I, I cannot wait actually for the new cat to own this place a little bit more because she is currently so shy that I have the feeling that she hasn't dared to make this space her own. So I can't wait to say that, yeah. We are, in fact, paying rent at the kitty's house. Yeah, I think what I, I will not have time to to go into too much is definitely the hair in this case. Bear with me, guys, okay? We're going to try to do the most of it. Mm 
and still make it interesting. Yes, Teresa, I'm sure I'm going to be able to talk my daughter into doing a drawing with us sometime. Now in those darker areas of the forehead, I definitely put more pressure on my, on my pen, you've probably noticed just now. This is fun. I hope it's as much fun for you guys. What are you saying, Stina, that one of my cats was the same when we bought him? Mm. I love that cats do that. They are definitely, those of them who are, man, when they're tuned in like that, they're amazing. This is tricky here. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the ends. Uh, I think it's you, Teresa, asking me. Of course. Look, I started here a little bit. I'm gonna do a little bit here. Let me show you. So as you approach and you've got a, a stark contrast, you start going lightly, extremely lightly at the end of the curls, and make some kind of hair texture appear, but still keeping the curl a little dark. And, sorry, I was not quite on camera here. Um, and you want those edges to be soft, soft, so that you see almost all the individual hair at, at the very edges. You see here, the curls there, right? And it makes the hair look so much more realistic. 
so you can go dark once you're inside because it, it is very dark right so look boom 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 you see here but then blending 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 and you'll see on this cheek here, this is all going to blend together. Okay. All right, let me see, actually. Let me get into this. Yeah, it's something like that. I'm not very happy about this eye. Okay, let's live with it for now. Thank you, Patty. I'm smearing some ink. Let 
good so we attend to lower this yes it is so quiet I know I know but it is it is in a way it is true So it's almost one o'clock, but uh, I'm not done. I'm not ready to uh, to walk away yet quite. Getting there, but I'm not there yet. For example, the roundness of this cheek here needs to be rendered a lot better. Because right now it's not round, it's flat. I'm not even sure that I have enough resemblance. Um, I have not worried about resemblance yet. Suddenly I'm looking up and I'm like, oh, this may not look like the same young lady.
Now I'm going over the, the same area again because that's how you build those values. I already have this under layer of, of pen, but I'm coming back. Um, Uta, what do you call ink shadows at the end of lines? What is that? I'm not sure what an ink shadow is. Is it when your pen comes back and makes another line? Like when it bounces back on the paper? Okay, I want to do at least the bottom of the of the face because it's it's really where most of the the pleasure of cross hatching lies. You see how much darker it gets. Oh, so nice. But here things stay a little bit light. How are we doing everybody, okay? You know we're going to head over to Sketchy Art School after this to the uh, Drawing with Friends group and we're going to post. This group is free if you're new here. Join the group. I think there are a few hundred uh, of us there, right? Okay. Hi. Oh, that's interesting. Your ink lines leave a little spot of concentrated ink at the end. Um, does it happen, Uta, because you are hatching slowly and therefore the ink has the time to sort of deposit? Does that make sense? Um, and, oh, I just left a blob of ink right there by the mouth. Could it be it? I don't think I know that phenomenon Uta, even with a you know fountain pen Cross-hatching away, cross-hatching away, hey. You know, the nearer your destination, the more you keep hatching away. That's how I feel right now. I'm getting so close to finishing and this is where I feel the need to add a lot of little hatches to finish, you know? Hence my, uh, my quoting, of course, I know. Okay. 
but I'm getting close guys I'm getting close to the end I'm adding the last uh, touches of what I see as being the darkest you know values on her face but really adding depth here and hopefully you guys can all see the the curve of the cheek now forming a lot better And, and this side of the face being less lit, obviously, than the other side, you can really blend the hair and the facial features together here. It works. here too. I'm putting a lot more pressure on my pen right now as I'm finishing the, you know, that less um, lit side of her face. Okay, I did not even go into the hair here. My gosh, the hair here. Here. Okay, guys, I'm going to sign off soon. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Shading. Yeah, time is flying, right? Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm going to get going. Oh, Melody, I want to uh, address your question. Melody Martz, you are asking about the, the width of the pen. This is a medium. Uh, this is not even a fine. And I think medium is great because you can really achieve some, uh, some bold, dark lines that I don't think the fine fine ballpoint pens uh, quite allow. Yeah, I really love a medium ballpoint. They are my favorites. There's more dark here under this eye, I'm noticing. Okay, how much does it look like on use? I hope it does quite a bit. But keep in mind that my goal on Saturdays or ever is to learn something about light, about volume, rather than how to replicate exactly uh, somebody's resemblance, which I, I see really very little interest in doing. Um, by doing this today, I've managed to, to convey a range of tones that I really, you know, I really wanted to get there. That was my goal. Okay. Yes, Annie, I'm glad that this song will be in your, in your head. <laughs> All right, everyone, I think this is where I am going to uh, call it a day. I'm just going to suggest her little shoulder here. All right. It's that simple. You don't have to do more than that. If I had another 60 minutes, I would say I could really get into the hair and how to make, you know, the darker parts of the hair stand out and the lighter part kind of make it look um, 3D, you know. Uh, we don't have that kind of time, but... Boy, the little bit that we did today was really, really enjoyable. I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoyed it. I hope, uh, I hope you got something out of it. Thank you, everybody, for being here.
Okay. Can we please go to a sketchy art school? We're going to go to the group Drawing with False. And I'd like you to post what you've got, whether you did it in Procreate, because remember, we are in the middle of 30 faces, 30 days, or whether you did this pen on paper, pencil on paper, maybe. Um, either way, I really want to see uh, what you've done. I'm probably going to monkey with this for a few more minutes. I can't help it. And plus, I don't think I've achieved the level of... Um, of dark that I really wanted to achieve like especially right here right where I am in there so I don't know but okay so I'm gonna stop it here and uh, thank you for being here I hope I'll see you again uh, next uh, week right next week which should be the 18th all right everybody that was about 72 minutes together can you please have a great weekend and uh, I'm gonna post this I'm gonna post this as is all right, I'll see you soon. Merci, Cathy, super session, ça me fait plaisir. Okay, ciao, everybody, besos, mwah. And I'll see you soon, okay? Bye.